Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again! I was recently asked by Skrill Vertex on Twitter about how I managed to keep my graphics thermal low on complex looking sculpts. In response, I'm going to take what I know about the subject out of my brain and I'm going to put it into all of your brains. I wrote this up as a 12 topic subject. I had tons of footage for the first three topics, so this looks to be a three or four part video. This being the first part, let's get to it. First topic, scene limits. The graphics thermal limit is 100%. Each sculpture you add to a scene has a graphics thermal cost. Copies of that sculpture are free from a graphics thermal standpoint. They only cost in gameplay thermal at that point. To reiterate that idea, you pay for a sculpture in graphics thermo the first time you put it in a scene. Copies are free from a graphics thermo standpoint. If you remove all of the copies of that sculpture from the scene, you gain that graphics thermo back. So what am I doing here in the video? I'm adding unique sculptures until I hit the graphics limit. How many unique sculpts you can use in a scene is very simple. It's 100 divided by the average cost of your sculpts. There is also an absolute unique sculpt limit of 256. Typical sculpture has a graphics cost of 3 or 4 percent, so you can expect to be able to populate a scene with around 30 unique sculptures. This is not a high amount, especially for larger scenes. But what if you could make it so that your sculpts only cost 1 or 2 percent graphics thermo each? Now you're talking about being able to use 50 or even 100 unique sculpts in a scene. That doesn't sound like a lot, You'll certainly find more in reality, but it's actually a pretty good amount to build a game scene with. The sculpts I'm adding here range from 1% to 14%, and I end up with about 40. When you look at them piled up like this, it seems like a lot more than 40 sounds. You can get a decent amount of scene variety with this amount. Issue number one with graphics thermo. Hey, no problem, I'll just go over 100% and my content will run slow. Wrong. That's because when you go over 100% graphics thermal, you get this nifty message about how you can't save. So in order to do anything with your content other than look at it, your graphics thermo needs to be at or under 100%. One issue we have to currently contend with is that a sculpture's graphics thermo is reported as an integer value, like 1, 2, 3, or 4, when the actual cost is a decimal value. To illustrate this, I have a scene with two sculptures. The top one has a reported value of 5%. The bottom one has a reported value of 4%. The scene is reporting a cost of 8%. Well, 4 plus 5 does not equal 8, so what gives? I came up with a little technique to give you a little more information about a sculpture's graphics cost when you need it. We're going to do this with both of these sculpts and get a clear picture of their real cost and also what that means about thermo reporting. So what I do is make 10 total copies of a thing. Remember I said once you have a sculpture in a scene there is no extra graphics cost for copies. So right now with 20 sculptures in the scene the graphics cost is still 4 plus 5 equals 8. However, if you change a sculpture in sculpture mode and make it different than your other copies, you now have a, have a unique sculpt and it will cost you independently even though it looks 99% the same. So I'm going through each of these and spray painting a little square on them in sculpture mode. This will make each one of these 20 sculptures unique and each one will cost us in graphics thermo independently. It is extremely important to note that changes in sculpture mode and changes in sculpture detail both do this. However, if you make changes in the various sliders in a sculpture's menu, it will not have this effect. You can also change a sculpture's flex type without making, making it unique from a graphics thermal standpoint. You can see right here, graphics thermo went from 8% to 75% just by making these unique. But wait, 8 times 10 is not 75. What's up here? Let's examine these types one at a time to see what's going on. So for the bottom type only, the graphics thermo is 32%. If you're not a big math fan, what we just did there was add a decimal point to the reporting. 32 divided by 10 being 3.2. This is a more accurate representation of our cost than 4. Let's try the other one. Same thing, we'll get rid of the bottom sculptures, leaving our 10 unique top sculptures. 
result is 43%. 43 divided by 10 is 4.3, so a truer cost is 4.3%. And what do you know, 3.2 plus 4.3 times 10 equals 75, which is why our scene is reporting 75%. There are a couple of important things to note here. The first is that thermo reporting is a ceiling value, which means it goes to the next highest integer if the value is any amount more than an integer. This is different than rounding, which will go up or down depending on which side of the half your number is on. So quick example with a ceiling, a number like our 3.2 value here goes up to four. If we were rounding, it would go down to three. With a ceiling value, your original value could be 3.01, and it would still report 4. Well, what does that matter? A scene will fit 25 4% sculpts. It will fit 33 3.01% sculpts. There's no way of knowing which yours are without doing this, or chucking everything into a scene and seeing what you end up with. Another point to be made is that you can't do this with sculpts that cost more than 10% or so because you end up hitting the thermo limit with all of your copies. You can still get a better report than integer, but you'll have to make less than 10 copies and divide your result by that. So now that we know what the limits are and how Dreams reports them to us, let's move on to what we can do to manage our thermo better from the ground up. The absolute easiest way to reduce cost of a sculpture is with the Sculpture Detail tool. I have four identical sculpts set up here, all at a maximum cost of 24% graphics thermo. These are extremely detailed cubes. They're all the same surface area. Your graphics cost is essentially a measure of, of the amount of flex it takes to cover your sculpture. So when we reduce the graphics cost of the same surface, we are telling the engine to use fewer flex to cover it. The thing about the most graphically intense surfaces is that the flex are so tightly packed you can't even see them close up. This sort of detail is desirable for things like first person shooters, but many times is a waste of resources when your camera is further out like in third person or fixed camera positions. Left to right, our cubes are reporting costs of 24, 17, 7, and 5%. With that big a spread in values, you might expect to see a dramatic difference in surface detail. However, when we look at all of these from the same distance, we see some difference, but the 5% one doesn't look half bad in terms of fuzziness. This tells you that you can reduce sculpture detail quite a bit without adverse effects in your scene under most circumstances. One last thing I want to show is that this concept works the same way if you retain the same flex size at different surface areas. So what I have here is two cubes that are, that are the same size, same sculpture detail, same cost. So at this point, they are both covered by the same amount of flex, and the size of those flex are the same on both. I'm going to take one and scale it up 800%. This cube will now have 512 times the surface area of the other one. Logically, if the flex remain at the same density and same relative size, the flex on the bigger one will be 512 times larger, and so will the space between flex. We can get these flex sizes to match up by lowering the sculpture detail of the smaller cube. And the end result is that the smaller cube has a graphics cost of 2% compared to 24% of the larger cube. Same flex size, lower cost for using it on a smaller sculpt. So in this video I have introduced you to how the engine tracks limits, how those limits affect what you can put in a scene, how to get a better idea of what a sculpture costs in terms of graphics thermo, and lastly, how the amount of flex on your sculpture affects its cost. Still nine more topics to go in explaining how graphics thermo works in Dreams for PS4. I would expect this to take at least two more videos, however that is all for this time. Until next time, I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.